The tramway was supposed to link the poorer parts of New Aris to the industry district, but it never escaped its own slum due to lack of funding. Broken windows and vengeful graffiti sway people from renting this old building. A ragged-looking woman beckons you nearer. You strike up a conversation. Hey honey, why don't I come back to your place, bend you over into positions that you never knew that you could reach? Handsome, that isn't nearly as much fun. Frankie, the boss? Sweetie, stay away from him. Us girls have enough trouble from Frankie. There's no need for anyone else to be endangered. Any time, honey. You take the subway to the New Aris Chronicle. Dust swirls itself into a frenzy, as does your nostalgia. You can still get a whiff of the printing press smell of the first article you ever placed in here. You take the subway to the new Aris Police Department. Look, my hands, they're shaking. It's all starting to get to me. I mean, how many times am I going to have a knife pointed at me? All I was going to do was write a trivial restaurant review. Now look at me. I'm chased out of the slums by a crazed pusher, and that was after hallucinating about a... I don't even know what I saw. An autistic savant be getting mangled by this guy's unrelenting fists. I mean, who the hell was he? And how would he... Wait, how could I even know that that guy's autistic? I didn't see anything that would suggest he was. What am I doing? I'm talking to myself as if this really happened. I need to get to the NAPD and get some control over my situation. I should talk to Captain Barbarelli. He's always in control of himself. Well, except when I ask him to do a favor. Sometimes I think he still holds a grudge against me for busting his partner. I mean, come on, that was two years ago, and if he's going to be mad at anyone, it should be his partner. He's the one who stole the drug money. Besides, if anyone deserves to hold a grudge, it's me. After I did that report, I finally got the job offers I've been wanting, but I had to sign on with this trashy newspaper a couple months before. What the hell was I going to do, though? I mean, I need to eat. The pillars remain aligned in their support of the Justice Building. 
iron bars mesh across these windows, reminding criminals that they are indeed in the custody of the law. The grim face looks out into the city, matching gaze with the eagle statues. The eagle, now in Boston bronze, has been the symbol of patriotism for years. Anyone looking at these fearsome birds thinks of justice and honor, but for some reason, you think of ducking. A highly decorated door stands proud. Pure bronze and brass fuse to form the metallic sternness of the NAPD badge. The sign glimmers under its plexiglass frame. This sign points you in the direction of the forensic lab. A woodcut relief picture of former police commissioner Thomas. The inscription reads, Brave in Fight, 1960 to 2008. The American Eagle, with its watchful eye and proud beak, provides protection to the city of New Arras. The large officer fingers the remnants of his meal while sitting at the information desk. People of all shapes and heritages line the hallways with nothing in common but their discontent with red tape. The police department had gone to great length to design a giant lobby area only to be staffed with one officer. He seems annoyed at your approach. Is there something I can help you with? Look, pal, you're just gonna have to wait in line like everybody else. He seems annoyed at your approach. Is there something I can help you with? Heh. <laughs> You and everybody else around here. I'll schedule you in for an appointment. Matchin? I've heard of you. Barbarelli's mentioned you once or twice. Why don't you wait for him in his office? I think he'll be there shortly. You walk down the corridor and enter Barbarelli's office. A television and a VCR are surrounded by collections of law books and video cassettes. A sharp, angular statue rests on top of the filing cabinet. A small crack has started to appear directly behind the statue. Filled with files and reports, these cabinets are practically bulging with cases Captain Barbarelli has been involved with in his long-standing career. A black leather couch sits underneath the bookshelf. The sealed window looks out onto the city. Off in the horizon, you can make out the thin outline of the Rubin Corporation's headquarters. This warped image is a replica of the last piece painted by Vincent van Gogh. Due to neglectful maintenance, a crack has started to grow up the wall directly behind Captain Barbarelli's seat. A large fax machine sits on the desk. A recent fax rests in the received pile. A giant cluttered desk sits on the far side of the room. A tiny vid phone sits behind the photo of Barbarelli's wife. An unfriendly face scowls back at you.
You walk out of the office and out to the corridor.